Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, in this segment we're going to start wiring up the front end. We're going to get the tube sockets installed, we get the RCA jacks installed, we're going to start looking at the tag strips and how I'm going to lay those out, probably go ahead and install the volume control too, maybe even get this switch done and get this illuminator working, but hey, we may do that at a future date. So anyway, let's get rolling on getting this amp done. Okay, so we're getting ready to start soldering some of this stuff up. Here's the jumper wire that goes from the plate over here to this terminal strip here. We're going to solder into this lower hole and over here to that tag point on the end here. So let's go ahead and get our tip ready. And then come down here on this end and solder this into this lower hole here. Just like that. So next we're going to come in and put our 5K grid stopper on the input tube. And we are going to go ahead and go with the 5K since there is no input attenuation on this amp. It's not going to hurt to have a little breath of it. And we want this resistor as close to this pin socket as we can. That gives the maximum amount of grid stoppage. So there's that end, and then we're going to have a couple of other things tied to this one. So we're going to wrap this around, trim that off, and while it isn't required, I like putting these little pieces of PTFE tubing on there when applicable. So the other thing we're going to have is we're going to have this 510K grid leak resistor that goes right across there. And I think I'm going to put it on the inside. Bend that around. Just like that. And smush those down. And I think we're ready to solder up this joint right here. that. I'm sure we're going to have more stuff connected to this ground here. And this is where our signal is going to come in from our RCA jack. So we kind of left that unsoldered at the top there to connect that. Then the next thing we have is our plate load resistor. And it's going to go across like this. I'm going to bend that around. And then solder this end down. And it's going to look like that. So positive is going to come from here, 
over to here. But we'll do that here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and try to get all these parts around the tube soldered into place. The next thing we need to do is we need to bring the cathode over to this pin. And we're just going to run a wire from there to here. So let me get a little piece of wire for that. Just like that. And we'll do this in first. See, my iron was all dirty and I couldn't get a nice soldering action going there. So make sure you keep your, your soldering tip clean. There we go. Now we're going to have multiple things connected here. And the guy who sent me all these parts, he sent a 2.2K resistor, which deviates a little bit from Mark's plan. But he also raised the B plus voltage from his initial design as he was tweaking this thing. And so. I don't think dropping this down to a 2.2K is going to have any consequences. And worst case is we come in and swap this thing out with a 2.4K if we have to. But I don't want to hold up progress on this amp just because of that. And as someone else noted... When he raised the B-plus voltage, the bias went from 5.8 volts to 7 volts. And this might possibly bring it back down closer, at least somewhere between that 5.8 volts and 7 volts. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. I'm trying to do this as neat as I can. I like keeping resistors away from each other. So we'll put that in there as we solder this up. So the last thing we have is to solder the bypass capacitor across here. But I always do the capacitors last because they're the most heat sensitive things. So we're going to come over here to the other side of the tube and we've got to power up the plate, which is this pin right here, and it's going to come straight off of this. So we'll use our same yellow color wire that we were using for the plate on this side of the amp just to keep things consistent. Cut a little piece of wire off. See if this fits okay here. That should work good. And after getting that soldered, then we come over here and tag this end down. Like that. Now the next thing we need to do is connect our grid stopper for the cathode follower. I'm going to bend that over a little bit. I'm coming here and put this little guy in place. And I will say, like I'm using these resistors that the guy sent me. And this is one of the reasons I don't like working with these little half watt resistors is the wires on them are so tiny they don't hold anything in place. And so when you're trying to put things together and bend leads around, 
it's just super frustrating when you're doing a point to point wiring where you really don't need like tiny resistors like you might on a PC board. If I was you building this, I would definitely be using just the regular old like two watt resistors that I use for everything. Or at the very least be using one watt ones that have thicker wire. It's just a lot easier to work with. So anyway, twist this around. This end soldered on. So next we have the one mag grid leak resistor that goes from this terminal over to this center one. And it's going to go across like that. Actually, I might put that one on the inside too. Just like I did on the other side. So we'll put that about like that. And like I was saying earlier, these microscopic thin wires on these half watt resistors just aren't ideal for doing point to point wiring. I mean obviously they're going to work fine. But I just find it's easier to do point-to-point -point wiring using resistors that have just a little bit thicker leads. Okay. There's that little resistor. Then we have two more resistors on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and use these 1 watt resistors for both of these. I think Matt said you only have to have a 1 watt for the 10K one. I'm going to go ahead and make this 1K one as well. Then it's going to go between this pin and that pin. And then we're going to have a 10K that goes between this pin and that pin. Slide this side in. I'm going to go ahead and solder this one up completely since we are done soldering stuff to this terminal now one of the things that you're probably going to run into when you're soldering these tag strips I solder them like this so you can see it on the camera this is not the ideal way to do it what happens is gravity works against you and all the solder keeps flowing down to the bottom of the tag strip and you end up with just a big blob of solder down on the bottom. Really you should turn the amp on its side to get this solder joint where it's completely filled up this hole. So I'm going to do that real quick and show you what I'm talking about here. You can see if you look, the solder is all here and it's trying to just run down this tag strip. And that's not what we want. We want it to fill this hole up. So let me show you what it looks like after I solder it with the amp on its side. Amp, I just made a mistake there too. I soldered that up and then now I got to come back and put this resistor in. It's just so easy to make mistakes when you're trying to do stuff on camera. that one. Let's see if I can get this one to cooperate. Here we go. And there's our resistor set up on this side of the tag strip. So this is going to be our output that goes to the volume control and the Coupling cap is going to go across from here to there. So let me get the wire together to put up to here. 
and find my capacitors and stuff and we'll finish wiring up this one too and then I can do the other one off camera and get ready to power this thing up and start checking voltages. So off camera I came in and put this one white wire here that is our cathode wire from the cathode follower section of the tube over to this end point on the tag strip which is going to be our output that goes over here to our volume control through that large coupling cap. And then I still have to put the coupling cap from here over to here. But I'm going to do that after I've checked all the voltages. So I also went ahead and ran this power lead from this plate tie point here where both the plates are you know, connected. This one's directly, this one's through this plate load resistor. And this comes over to our B plus and our power supply. And then we have the ground that comes over here to this ground point. And I didn't show you this earlier. I connected this ground terminal here to this ground terminal here with this little green jumper wire that goes underneath here. And they're also connected together with these lugs being bolted down to this tube socket holder. So we've got a really good ground connection between this point and this point. Originally I was going to run a separate ground wire from this, but then I thought better of that, that I actually would probably be creating a ground loop. So connecting this directly over to this one, then all of our grounds for each signal tube will be in their own little ground point here. And we'll have the RCA grounds also connected to this point and the volume control ground to connect to this point. So we'll have a nice, good, short ground path for all that stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wire up this other tube off camera and try to zip along on this project a little bit. When I come back, we'll point out kind of how I connected all the wires so you'll understand that for you guys that are going to be doing this yourself. I know in other projects, when I've done the other tube off camera that even if it was a mirror of it people were asking a lot of questions so I'm going to go ahead and come back on camera after I wire it all up and show you where all the connections go but I think this is a good place to wrap up this video right here well I think we made some good progress today we got the tube sockets in the RCA jacks in we got the components kind of decided where we're going to put everything we got some of the wiring done and I think we're heading in the direction we want to be. I think this is going to be a really cool project. Hope you're enjoying this too. Hopefully, maybe another video or two, we'll be finishing this thing up. So again, I want to thank the Patreon supporters, also people that have made donations to my website. Super appreciate that. If you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. We're always doing cool stuff here at Skunky Designs. Like the video. And until next time, have a nice day.